Good morning, good morning, and welcome to our very first Saturday morning craft time on YouTube. Uh, I'm super excited to be trying this new format and uh, really hope that uh, this works for you guys so that we can continue to craft together on our Saturday mornings. Um, but it also allows me to be a little bit more uh, hands on in the store when we open up Saturdays are proving to be one of our busiest weeks our busiest days of the week, uh, like it was uh, before. Um, so it's a little bit harder for me to be able to be alive while the store is open it gets a little noisier and we do need um, extra hands on deck. So I will still be trying to uh, join in with you and watch the comments. And that's the wonderful part about this particular format is that you can still comment, we can still interact, we can still be crafting together. Um, but for me, the work part of this is already done. So this video has been pre recorded. It is not live. Uh, but I think we'll still have lots of fun crafting and we'll do it just the same way that we would do on a Saturday morning zoom and cut our papers together, create our project together, and still have lots of fun. Now, if you are watching on replay, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know life is getting busier and you cannot always tune in live. So this is a great opportunity for you to still watch on replay as well and have all this wonderful, um, all these wonderful resources, this wonderful library of resources for you for your crafting ideas. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, today we are creating a Z Fold Surprise gift card holder. And that's actually the theme that I'm going to be using throughout the month of November as that is gift card holders. As we get into uh, the holiday season where we're giving gift cards, where we're trying to mail things to special people who we still may not be able to see in person. Uh, we want to put a little extra into that. We don't want to just send a $20 bill. We don't just want to send a Tim Hortons gift card. And uh, these ideas hopefully will give you some inspiration to create something special for your loved ones that are far away, or even if they're close. I mean, I know I have teenagers in my life and really all they want are gift cards and uh, cash. So this way, at least I'm still able to give a little piece of my heart along with the gift that I know they will use. So this uh, format is super cute and super easy to make. I've got three examples here and we're gonna be making a fourth, cutting together and going right from the start. But let's just walk through one of them and I'll show you what this card is all about. So this is using Simple Stories uh, Make It Merry paper, and I just use a little ribbon to tie it together. Uh, I also use some of the die cuts on the front, and uh, you will notice it is not on a card base. You could put it on a card base if you wish, but you don't need to. And like a lot of formats I show you, once you figure out the main mechanism, you can absolutely adjust the measurements and adjust the uh, even the orientation to change it up and make it work for the supplies that you have. So this is just on a little uh, four and a quarter by five and a half piece of cardstock. And then our little Z fold opens up to reveal the surprise. And that is all kinds of messaging plus a pocket to put your gift card, maybe photos for grandparents, uh, like those little wallet size photos that you get from your school pictures. Uh, gift cards, cash, all that good stuff can all tuck in that little pocket. And then it just closes up and ties up again. So that was the first card. Uh, the second card, I did a non-Christmas one using some Echo Park paper. And I believe it is the Let's Go on an Adventure paper. I could be wrong with that title. My apologies. I will correct it when I write up the description for this. But once again, this just opens up with a nice little pocket um, to hold everything together. And this one is using Vicki Booten's Warm Wishes, which is actually, I'm gonna use similar paper for the one that we're going to make today. So this, and this one I used Baker's Twine, just to tie it all together. And our little Z fold opens up to reveal our little pocket and a space for us to 
write our message to the recipient. And as we go through all the pieces, I will you know, talk about this a little bit more. Definitely look at your three by four cut aparts or the paper that you're using to make sure this panel has space uh, to write that spe special message. Or conversely, you could always put a little white panel on the back and write it on the back. So those are three samples that I use to practice and refine this fabulous uh, format here for you guys. And let's dig in. So I have written out the measurements here. I will try my best to keep it in view so that you can uh, follow along. These notes will also be in the description of the video. So if you would like to craft along with me, which I would love, then here is what you need. So first off, we need some solid cardstock. We're gonna cut three pieces, one of which we're going to score, which is that Z pullout. You need a couple of pieces of pattern paper, and then you need two three by four cut aparts. Now you can always make those what you want. Uh, for example, on this card here, these cut aparts were actually four by four, and I just trimmed them down to match what I needed. If you don't have cut aparts handy, you are more than welcome to just cut pattern paper to three by four and uh, then embellish, add die cuts, add stickers, add all that kind of good stuff. So I'm gonna slide this off to the side so that we can still see our measurements. I am gonna get my paper trimmer. Actually, before I do that, other things that you're gonna need, obviously you're gonna need your adhesive. Uh, one thing I do highly recommend is a really thin score tape uh, for our pocket. You're going to need a circle punch, uh, anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half, mine's an inch and a quarter. You're gonna need your bone folder and your paper trimmer and your scoreboard, or just use your paper trimmer for scoring, and then just your regular adhesive and some ribbon. So I'm gonna put my ribbon off to the side and I'm gonna start with my four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. Uh, fortunately, I have smaller pieces. I'm not cutting into 12 by 12. So I'm gonna just start by using my guillotine uh, trimmer and let's get this cut. This first piece is the piece that you are going to be cutting for your base. So you can just, uh, solid color cardstock, anything that's got a little bit of weight to it so that you can make sure it's sturdy enough to hold all the little elements we're going to put on this card. Now I believe, yep, I'm already four and a quarter inches wide because this I use the other half for my sample and I'm going to cut this down now to five and a quarter. Easy peasy and I think So this is the four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. Uh, the next piece we're going to cut is also cardstock, which is our mat for our Z fold piece. You can do it the same color if you wish. I'm actually going to switch it up for some red uh, to give it um, a little extra punch of color. And this piece I want to be three and a half by four and a half. So once again, I think I'm fortunate. My width is already three and a half. You can see right here. Let that zoom, there we go. So I simply need to cut this down to four and a half inches in length. So this piece is three and a half by four and a half. And I'll find my little post-it note for that. There it is. So those are the two um, matte pieces or foundational pieces that we need for our card. The next piece that's on my list here is four and a quarter by nine and three quarters. Now I currently have that li this listed under the cardstock. You could definitely use pattern paper as well, which is uh, what I did on this card. I used pattern paper instead of cardstock. Just make sure you like both sides of that paper because you will see both sides. This one I just used cardstock as well as this one was just, well, oops, upside down. This one is just cardstock. So totally up to you. For this card today, I'm actually going to use pattern paper 
uh, not that one, this one here. I love this green plaid and I did not use that on my sample card. So I want to use it here for, um, for my accordion piece. It looks like this time I do need to switch to my other trimmer because I've got that bigger piece. Switch. So I'm gonna start by cutting it four and a quarter inch, four and a quarter inches wide. Um, I wanna make sure that I get the snowflakes on the back. So I need to make sure that uh, this bottom piece is the piece that gets cut off. So four and a quarter. All the way up. That's just scrap now and nine and three quarters long. We are going to score this piece as well, but we will do that in a later step. Nine and three quarters. There we go. Yep, that's good. Making sure the other side is nice as well. Nine and three quarters. And that little bit of scrap can just go off to the side. Okay, I'm gonna jump back to my guillotine. So that is it for those first three pieces, which could be cardstock, or in my case, I changed this longer piece to pattern paper. Now we're gonna cut our last two pieces of pattern paper. One is to go on the front of the card. In this case, it would be the plaid or the snowflakes or the dark holly around here. Uh, you do wanna make sure that it's a fairly small random pattern if you're going to do it, uh, because that mat's gonna cover up a fair amount of it. Oh, let me put my post-it note over here. Um, I did try with a stripe and I found that a lot of the strike, stripe ended up getting covered up. So you want something that's kind of small and detailed. I'm gonna use this piece uh, from Vicki Booten. Uh, this one is called Holly Jolly, and I just like all the little words and the great texture that comes from that, all those words. So I need it to be four by five and a quarter. So let's start with my four inch piece first. And five and a quarter. So there we have that piece ready to go. And last but not least, we need a little piece for our pocket. Now on a lot, on some of my cards, this one I didn't do. This one I used the polka dots because I wanted to tie some of the pink in. Uh, this one, I used the same paper that I used for that base so that I could tie the outside to the inside. Those are just some design choices. This time, I think because I've got this little piece here and I really, really, really do love the, the plaid, but I do love the snowflake as well. I'm gonna use this little piece that's left over. So use whatever scrap you want. This is going in the center to create your pocket. So two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And look, Lucky me, this is already two and a quarter wide. So I'm simply gonna rotate it and cut it at three and a quarter this way. All right, so that is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And don't worry, I'll go over these one more time before we actually start putting our card together. The very, very, very last thing we need are two three by four cut aparts. One is going to be the front and one is going to be, uh, I guess, the last panel that you're going to see. So where did mine go? I want to use Happy and Merry Days. And I think I like how many polka dots there are on this side. So I'm going to use this one already. This one's already been cut apart, so it's already three by four. And I'm going to use happy and merry days for my front. So just eyeball it along the edge there. And there you go. 
and you can trim them down a little bit more if you want to mat them you can do all kinds of fun things to them but that is all that we need right now i'm going to tuck that off to the side i do have stickers i do have little scraps of paper that we might want to use for embellishments so i'm just keeping them handy uh, but uh, we are just about ready to assemble so let's do a really quick final walkthrough of all the pieces that we have and then we can start putting it all together so we do have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock followed by a four by five and a quarter inch piece of pattern paper that's going to go like that followed by three and a half by four and a half cardstock which is going to go center on the card and here's where you can really see why you want like a small a small pattern uh, so that you can still get the most of that pattern around the edges even though you're not seeing a whole lot of it then we need our accordion which is four and a quarter by nine and three quarters and we need three pieces to decorate it up we need a sentiment we need a back panel which can be plain so that you can write your message in uh, this one is the best example of that or again just a piece of pattern paper and then you need a and these are both three by four Do that and lastly you need your two and a quarter by three and a quarter piece that's going to go right in the center to make our pocket. Hope everybody's good. Typically, this is where I say, give me the thumbs up. Give me the thumbs up if you're going, even though I can't see it. I'm going to envision your thumbs up in my head. All right, I'm going to tuck those pieces off to the side and we're going to focus on these three pieces first. So I am simply going to adhere them all together. This is the easiest part of the card. The hardest part is picking your paper, quite honestly, and knowing what's gonna go with what. Now I'm gonna use my inverted corner punch just to provide some decorative corners here. You could just use a regular rounded corner if you wish, or you can leave them square. And let's do this piece as well, so it can all line up. And then if you wish, you could ink up your edges to give it a little bit extra pop. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I have my evergreen bow and I've just got a blending tool. So I'm gonna ink up these edges just to kind of give them a little bit of finish. Um, most of the rest of my paper is dark. So I may not have to do this on too many pieces, but I kind of like that little extra finish. So I'm just going to edge up and away we go. A little bit more ink. This evergreen bow, I mean, the name makes it seem more green than it actually is. It definitely has a little bit of a teal blue cast to it. So I love using it with this teal paper. And I may come back to that for another piece. So we'll just leave that off to the side. And I'm just going to attach this down with my tape runner. Don't need anything special or fancy for this piece. Make sure if you're using words, <laughs> they're the right way up. Though at this point, it's all symmetrical. So you could easily flip it around. There we go. And like I said earlier, if you wish, you could go ahead and attach this to a regular A2 size card base. Um, I'm gonna leave it as is, but that is always an option available to you. All right, the next piece I'm going to attach down is my red cardstock. And you can leave this flat. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually gonna put it on some foam strips. which I had left on my other desk, because this is one of the few opportunities in this particular card where you have to pop some dimension up. Um, 
A lot of the other pieces, because you're going to be folding it on top of each other, I don't always like to use uh, foam for that. But this is a great opportunity. So I'm just going to take some foam strips and pop this up here. You could use foam tape, you can use your foam squares. It does not have to be the strips. I just had these handy and love how it's just the perfect size for this card. All right, maybe one more down that center. There we go. Make sure everything's stuck down and let's peel. Peel, peel. Peel. And there we go. So this is all ready to stick. Um, I very intentionally did not indent the corners on this one. If you're doing a regular rounded, you could. But with the accordion going on top, I wanted those shapes to match. And with the accordion, it'll be harder to round or indent the corners because there's too many layers. So I very intentionally left this. Uh, square, but that's totally a choice up to you. Using the words here to make sure I get this straight across. Did I get it? Yeah, that looks pretty darn good. So that is the base of our card. And for right now, that's all we need to do with that piece. So I'm just going to tuck it off to the side, put it right in front of me so it doesn't get lost. All right, deep breath. Let's stretch our fingers for a second. And now let's grab our four and a quarter by nine and three quarter piece of either cardstock or pattern paper. And we're gonna do our scoring. So the scoring for this is really simple. We're simply doing two score lines along the long side so that we can make this into thirds. And that will give us our accordion. So we are going to score at three and a quarter and at six and a half. I'm just gonna bring out my paper trimmer again. You can use your scoreboard if you wish. Gonna grab my scoring tool, Let's open up that arm. And like I said, three and a quarter, double checking, cause I did get it wrong on one of my previous ones. So three and a quarter, do, 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 do and score lightly, then build up pressure. You don't want to punch through your paper, so just go lightly at first and then build up your pressure to get a deeper score line. And then we're going to slide it along to six and a half. So this was three and a quarter. This is six and a half. And that is giving us three panels that are three and a quarter by four and, four and a quarter. So it's just taking that into thirds. And on this paper, you probably can't see the score lines because it's so busy, but when we fold it, everything will, everything will become apparent. So I'm going to take my right-hand panel, fold it in on itself and use my bone folder to score it up and just make it really nice and burnished. Uh, because it's making that accordion, we want it to be as flat as possible so that everything lies flat while the card is closed. Now I'm going to open it up and flip it right over and then fold this back on itself. So here's where the Z fold in the name comes into play. We are making a Z, or I guess a backward Z, out of our long strip. And it's just going to open like so. So this is the time where you need to decide which side is going to be most visible. I really, really, really want to use the plaid. So I'm going to keep the plaid facing up, but you can use whatever side you want. And I'm going to open it all up so that I can decorate it. Hopefully you've got all your measurements there. I'll just leave that there, but we'll focus on this. So I am going to start with my happy and merry days. And like I said, this is black, so I don't need to ink it. It's not going to show up anyways. But what I will do in order to mirror this is I will notch my corners with my corner punch. 
It really helps a design when you carry certain elements all the way through to as many pieces as possible. It doesn't have to be complicated, but that consistency really helps with your design. So just using tape runner, I will stick it down. So that's that one right there, centered on that left-hand panel all the way around. Okay, now I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna skip the middle panel for now and I'm gonna focus on this one right here. And again, I like the polka dots for this because this is tying in some of the same colors that are being used uh, in that uh, sentiment piece. But when I then start to pull out my stickers, everything, I can create a little panel for writing my message. And it just adds that extra burst of color once again my corners. And there we have it. I'm going to put the pink towards the top. Keeping it flat because we want our little accordion to lie flat on the card. Any extra dimension in here is just going to make it a little bit bulkier. So keeping it flat is ideal for this card. Okay. All we have left to do is our middle section, which is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. Now, if you lie this down here, that's where the piece is going to go. But because it comes really, really close to the score lines, it's going to make it a little bit cumbersome for that accordion to refold. So I'm just gonna grab my guillotine and I'm gonna trim just a sliver off one end of this piece, make it that tiny bit shorter so that it will fold. There is no direct measurement. Like I said, I'm just gonna take a hair. I want, I'm gonna say 16th of an inch, which I generally hate to do, but the guillotine makes it easy. Just that little tiny sliver off one end. That's all you need, just that little sliver so that it will fit in between the score lines. Now I'm realizing that I've already made a boo-boo. I had inked up the front and I had intended to ink up this piece as well. And I got so excited to stick it down that I forgot to do that. Let's see if I can gently peel it back up. That's the nice thing about score tape is that usually you can get it up. So bear with me a second while I fix that mistake. If you are ready to go on, just give me a sec. If you're catching up, this is a good time. There we go, that just kind of finishes those edges and makes it look a little bit softer. Whoops. There we go. Always good when you can fix those mistakes. All right, here we go. That's now back in place. And over here, I'm going to see if this shows up on that snowflake. The ink my oh, before I do that, though, let's cut our little notch. So I'm going to use my circle punch. Like I said, anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half. Uh, I wouldn't go much bigger than that because it's going to take up most of that edge. This is just our little thumb notch so that when the gift card gets in there, it's a little bit easier to get out. So all I'm doing is I'm going in on that long side, centering it and then just cutting that little tiny crescent out of that space. And if you're a little bit off center, do not worry. The recipient is gonna be so excited about the gift card, they won't even notice. All right. So yeah, this color's not showing up really dark, but it does kind of finish those edges. And ties everything together. 
So how do we attach this little pocket? This is where I will uh, bring out my really thin score tape and we are only gonna go around the two short sides and the one long side. Do not put any tape whatsoever on your side that has that circle notch. So I'm just gonna flip it over here. And a little bit of tape, get as close to the edge as possible. I do like using the score tape for this for two reasons. First, with a gift card or a note or money or photos going in this pocket, you wanna make sure it holds tight and stays stuck to the accordion. Uh, I also like, because it's, like it because it's really thin, it's skinny. So it makes sure that my opening in my pocket is as big as it possibly can get. So that way I've got a little bit of flexibility as to what goes in that pocket. All right, so peel the backing. And let's, I'm gonna line it right with the bottom. So long edge right along the bottom and get in between those score lines so that it will fold nicely. There we go. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this little scrap of cardstock and tuck it inside so that I remember that that's a pocket, like so. Now here's the test. If you can reform your accordion really easily, like I just did, then you've got your pocket exactly where you need it to go. If you're feeling a little bit of resistance because you have gone over this score line, do not fear. Just give it another good burnish with your bone folder to make sure it, to train it and make sure it lies flat. Okay, we are now ready to put our two sets of pieces together. But first we are going to attach our ribbon. So the ribbon is gonna go sandwiched in between the two pieces so that it stays put. And when the person unwraps the card, they don't lose the ribbon. It's going to be attached and part of the card. Um, so here's the trick. Let's take this away for right now. Here's my accordion, <clears throat> excuse me, with my sentiment on the front. I'm gonna flip it towards me so that that back panel is now facing up and the sentiment is face down, upside down on my surface. I'm gonna use a wider score tape. If you're gonna use the skinny stuff, if that's all you have, you may wanna put two strips, but I'm just gonna put one strip horizontally across the center of this piece here, like so. Give it a rub, peel it up, and then this is where I'm going to center. So if I fold, this is approximately the center. I'm going to lay it right across the tape. And that's going to hold it in place. You want to try and get it as centered as possible so that when we flip it over and tie the bow, it stays nice and centered but I always make sure I cut my ribbon extra long so I can always trim that too. So don't stress if you're not perfectly centered, not a problem, you can always fix that on the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put three strips of score tape, the wider one, uh, what I would call vertically on the back of this and that just gives us some extra stick. This piece is gonna get played with a lot. It also gives us an extra stick on that ribbon Make sure it stays in place. You could also use liquid glue at this stage, but I tend to be more of a tape gal versus a liquid glue gal. So that's why I'm using the score tape. All right, we will peel, peel, and get this last one. And now, Flip it back over so our sentiment is reading the right way, making sure your foundation piece is also in the right direction. And I'm just going to center this on the red piece, like so. So now you could go ahead, tie your bow, and it's ready to be delivered. 
but you know what? We need a few extra embellishments. We need to bling this up a little bit. So I'm gonna dig out. I have the sticker book that goes with the uh, warm wishes. And we've got all kinds of stickers and goodies in here. So let's just play a little bit and see what else we can put in. So like I said, I've used a really busy paper here, which is contrary to what I did for anything else, uh, because we do want an area where we can write to the recipient in this area. So in this sticker book, there are all these little label uh, stickers, which are super fun. Let's pull them out and to mirror some of these dots, I am going to choose. This one has gold foil on it. I don't know if it's showing very well in the camera here. Let's see if it'll focus. It's got that gold foil, so a little bit of shine here. And I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in the top left corner. And then I'm gonna take the other large circle, which is green, and I'm gonna overlap it like this. And that way I can write to Sam from mom. And maybe I will put, you know, I'm gonna use this um, more rectangular one right here. So I can say, I love you or something like that. So that gives me some space. I wish they were a little bit bigger, but they're not and that's okay. Um, what else can I use from this? So this one's got the little tabs. Wouldn't it be cute if we had a little pull tab over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to grab two of these and I think, I think I'm going to use the pink and I'm going to use the green. So the pink The pink I'm gonna put right here. Make sure you don't stick it right to your table because that sticky part is hanging out. And then I'm gonna put the green one on the back so that they match up and I don't have any sticky bits hanging out. So there, when it's closed, that gives you the sense that you need to pull that open. I think I will leave, I'll leave those for now. I'm not gonna use the numbers. I'll save that for another project. Um, these are more like a washi tape. I think I'm gonna skip that one and I'm gonna come back. Now these ones are a little bit long. So I would have to put it on an angle. Okay, we'll skip that. Let's focus on these guys here. So I wanna put something decorative on my snowflake. Maybe I'm gonna put this little reindeer guy. Oops. Interesting, he's not sticky. Oh, that's weird. The sticky is still here on this sheet. Okay, so I'm just gonna use glue. I will use some liquid glue and I will stick him down. And actually this is gonna to work to my benefit because I wanna make sure that the, these antlers do not block, do not block my pocket. I've worked hard to make this pocket. So there, we'll just stick him right here leave those antlers nice and free. And let's use Merry Christmas. I like the black because it ties in from the front as well as stands out well. Merry Christmas. 
at Christmas, all roads lead home. It's gonna sit down here. Let's go right to the edge. And I need a medium one for in between. Let's do, let's do making spirits bright. Just here. And there's five little stars here. So I think I'm gonna put this over here. This is where we're just having fun. We are having fun sticking things down. I'm gonna use these gold foil little stars on the front. One, two, three, And it's nice that there's an odd number. You always want to try to do odd numbers with your embellishments. And let's put this one here. I'm going to move. Can I get this one up? So there, just a little extra sparkle. This one's got a little bit of sparkle on it as well. So I'm going to do this. And that just points down into the pocket. So there you have it. And now I can close this up. I'm gonna tie it up. Fix my bow. And there's my scissors. Then I can just trim off. And we're done. So there you have it, folks. Our first gift card holder for November. Lots of great ideas. And like I said, if you've got the right kind of three by four cards, there's no reason why you couldn't have them come down this way. And even if the pocket's on the side, you can still tuck your, your gift card in there. And you can use it for any occasion that you wish. Now these me uh, measurements, like I said, I will also put them down in the description. Uh, so if you miss them, you will find them there. And we are set. So thank you so much for joining me this morning. Uh, I look forward to doing more in this format and hope you had lots of fun. As always, I'm open to your feedback and your thoughts. And I look forward to bringing you another video next week, uh, another gift card holder. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend.